So is it safe? Well, let me answer that question with a little story today. Hope you can get comfortable and stick around for a few more minutes. I promise I'll eventually get to backers, but it might take a bit. <laughs> I think it probably makes sense to start with a little bit of background. If you're new to the channel, I've only had this channel for about six years, and I've only been working with firewood probably 11 years, going on 11 years now. My neighbor Guy and Husky Bob, well, they were both born and raised in rural Canada on farms, and they've been processing and splitting firewood since they're probably big enough to split it and to stack it. So they've got a lot of expertise, decades like a lot of you good folks do. Over the six years that I've had this channel, I think we've all been pretty fortunate that I've now had 10 different log splitters that we've been able to see in use and operation here on the channel. It's certainly been a big benefit to me and hopefully to a lot of folks that are considering a new splitter and what type of splitter makes sense for their land and the things they do with firewood. We've had from the old conventional I-beam style, you know, 17, 18 second cycle time to splitters that you can pull a pin and flip them up vertically so you can split on the ground for any of the big rounds. We've had a couple of kinetics We've had a number of different horizontal models, some with a single wedge, some with a four or six way wedge. We've had log tables, we've had some without. We've had splitters that split in both directions. We've had quite a variety here. Some residential or consumer grade splitters, and some of course, that are your much more heavy duty commercial grade. So when Andrew Easton gave me a call a couple of years ago and said, hey, I've got a new splitter for you guys to try. You're gonna really love it. It's a vertical splitter. That caused a little bit of discussion back in the workshop between neighbor guy Husky Bob and me. Longtime firewood guys wanted nothing to do with an engineered vertical splitter. Just a whole lot of reasons why they didn't think it was going to be safe and you operate it with your foot board. Now, we're not touching it. Bottom line was, mere days before Andrew delivered that first access to us, they both told me, you're all on your own GP. This one's for you. We'll go back to using the old splitter. <laughs> I kid you not, true story. That is, until Andrew brought it and dropped it off for us to try out. A little skeptical at first, I have to admit, both Husky Bob and Guy. But after a couple hours of using it, it changed pretty quickly. And I'm gonna show you why. I think if you haven't actually operated one of these vertical splitters, which now we have probably three, maybe four different manufacturers making them, you probably have the same experience that we have and that Bob and Guy have had for decades. Usually your own experience with the vertical is one of those horizontal I-beam jobs. You pull a pin, you flip that cylinder upside down vertically, and then you fight with that round on the fourth floor while you've got one guy standing on the axle so the, the whole machine doesn't topple over and another guy's running the actuator. That's kind of the experience we had until we ran this machine. This machine has been engineered from the bottom up to split vertically. That's its sole purpose. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes today and show you a few things about this axis or this vertical splitter that you may or may not have noticed in YouTube videos. And the this machine without the conveyor weighs about 2,300 pounds. When you find a spot in the forest or on your property port and you get it set up and level, no matter how big a round you throw into that log lift, you are not gonna throw the balance of this machine off in any way. It's strong and sturdy enough that no matter how big that round is, you don't have to worry about one end of that splitter starting to teeter up off the ground. It's stable, it's strong, and it sits exactly where you want it to sit, and it doesn't move. Setting that splitter up in the forest, same as we go through. You've got to try to find a spot that's reasonably level and then try to dig it out as best you can to try to get the splitter in a position where it can sit reasonably stable and level so you can use it for the rest of the day. The addition of these stabilizer legs just add a lot of stability to this unit because you can pull them out or leave them in to whatever distance you think you need in order to provide that extra stability when operating the machine. GP, are you seriously trying to tell us that it's safe to actuate this splitter with your foot and not your hands on the lever? That's exactly what I'm telling you. If you're watching the video, I'll bet you drive a car or a truck. I'll bet you may have an ATV or you've had one. You probably drove motorcycles like I did for a couple of decades. You've got a tractor. You have all kinds of different vehicles or pieces of equipment that you've been using for decades that require hand and foot coordination. If you're driving a stick, 
One foot's double clutch and the other one's running the brake and the gas while you're shifting with one hand and steering with the other. Your motorcycle, your ATV, one hand on the clutch, one on the gas, one foot's popping gears, the other one's managing the back brake. These are natural intuitive features or functions and a natural coordination that we've been using for decades. So when you apply it to a splitter, you almost immediately realize just how intuitive it is to run the cylinder with your foot. And both hands are free to work on what is the most important or what might be the riskiest part of the function, splitting the round. A lot of splitters now, just like this Axis, have the ability to very easily change the throw of this cylinder so that you're not constantly retracting 24 inches down on a 16 inch piece of wood. What I believe is the biggest advantage of a vertical splitter is that my eyes are right in front of this wedge, which is only a couple of inches above my round. All of my focus and my hands are free to manage what I think is the most important function of the process. My foot actuates it, my hands and my eyes know exactly where that round's gonna get split because it's sitting right in front of my eyes. I don't have to worry about the round possibly shifting or moving or rolling an inch either way away from the wedge before the ram hits it, like in a lot of horizontal splitters. That round is sitting on its butt end. It's not going anywhere. Where you place it is where it's gonna get split. Where the wedge is right above the round is exactly where it's gonna split it. And hey, you know, you get those blocks, right? Husky Bob cuts them and he cuts them on a bit of an angle instead of cutting them perpendicular on the butt end. We all get them, you're gonna get them. On a horizontal splitter, when you throw that in there, it's every man for himself as to which end's gonna ride up or pop off under pressure. On the axis, we just spin it on that side. We put the leading or the long end of that angle into the backboard of the axis. That way, when the wedge comes down, it pinches and holds it there as it goes through the split. We have almost never, had a piece of wood fly out under compression off the side of that machine. And the few times it's happened, it's because we didn't point the leading edge in the back. A welcome improvement on this axis is that this is a free floating table now. In other words, the cylinder is not directly connected to it. It actuates it, allows it to go up and down, but because it's not connected, when this table hits the ground, that's where it stops. Whether it's the ground or your foot, it just sits on top. Unlike some of the other splitters I've had over the years, where if you pull too far, the cylinder will actually drive the table into the ground, lifting the machine up and off balance. I think this feature is especially helpful when working in the woods on uneven ground. And this access is crazy fast. In fact, I think I titled one of my previous videos, Crazy Fast. At full throttle, that wedge will be down and back in about three seconds. That's fast. But another safety feature that's been built into this machine is that you don't have to run it at full throttle. In fact, according to Andrew, and you folks know I'm not very mechanical, so I'll try to say this correctly, the peak of the torque curve on this engine is right about here, which means that I can actually slow that wedge down while still maintaining almost all, if not all of the power of that engine. I don't have to run it at full throttle, which means I can still punch through those oak and elm rounds up here. The axle on this unit is a torsion axle, and I can tell you it tows and trailers so cleanly behind my pickup truck down the road. It's a nice smooth ride you barely even know you're towing it and certainly helpful for going back through the forest going over stumps and bumps different holes or undulations you've got big tires on this and nice smooth suspension for going through the forest and hey speaking of features having a spot for you to put a canopy i think it's a brilliant idea i haven't got one yet because i've been looking online and they're pretty expensive but we would love to have one up over this sheltering us from the midday sun 
all summer long. The important thing is it's here. It was a well thought out design to the splitter. I think a couple of people have noted that the bottom side of the conveyor is wide open and could pose a safety hazard and that there should perhaps be a shroud covering the bottom where the chain and the rails come through. And hey, I think it's something to consider. I did talk to Andrew. He said that would have added yet another couple of hundred pounds of weight. And in theory, <laughs> you really shouldn't be walking under the conveyor when it's running. But then again, that might be the reason why we have Darwin Awards every year. Another benefit of this splitter that you may not have noticed, this wedge immediately auto retracts when I lift my foot off the pedal. I actuate the wedge, I remove my foot, and unlike some of the other splitters I've used over the years, the wedge doesn't sit there with 20 tons of force on top of you know, whatever might be stuck in there. It immediately retracts. I don't have to try to find the lever and retract it myself manually. It just does it automatically. One of the best advantages of this axis is the large work table that you have to deal with your rounds. You've got lots of room to take your time, move the rounds wherever you need them out of the way, split at your own pace, and you don't have to worry about that kind of exhaustion that builds up over hours when you're working on a horizontal with an I-beam or an older style conventional splitter. You're not always wrestling with a round. You've got lots of time and lots of room to play with them, to manage them the way you want, and to split them as small or as large as you want. I hope that's been kind of helpful for you folks, especially those that are out on the channel and you're looking at different splitters. I'd strongly urge you, if you've never used a vertical, whether it's this one or another one, next time you hit the Ohio International Expo or the Paul Bunyan, and you see one of these companies with a vertical, ask them to give it a shot. They'll let you use it and just take a look for yourself. I'm not trying to sell you this splitter. I think you folks know that. I'm not trying to sell you anything. What I am doing is answering some of those questions you get, whether I've got new implements or attachments for the tractor or a new splitter or a new chainsaw, you're always gonna get a lot of good dialogue and debate or questions on the channel. So hey, is it the best splitter? I can't say that. What I can say is the best splitter, I think is largely dependent on what it is you need the splitter on your property to do. Are you taking down the odd dead standing, tree down across the driveway, something you need to hook up to your ATV to pull out into the forest? Or are you bucking and splitting a lot of firewood every year? Five cord, 30, 40, 50 bush cord. Those are the things that will drive you to what you believe is the best splitter for what you need on your property. But I can tell you, without any hesitation, it is absolutely the safest splitter any of us have ever used. So hey, I'm gonna wrap it up there. I promised Guy I'd fill this trailer before noon. I hope the information was helpful today, and I hope it's answered some of those questions over the last couple of weeks or month. Have a great week out there. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching GP Outdoors. Cheers.